Is this a good bike? Bike vlogger here. Is this a good bike? Get that question a lot. So I thought I'd address it in this video. Sure, the answer isn't always the same, but I get the question, is this a good bike? And then someone sends me a link to a bike. So, what is my thought process on what a good bike is? I've talked about brand name bikes before. Link in the description below. Instead of a funny video, I mispronounced some of the brands. Like Bianchi, Bianca. Um, warranties are good, but I don't know. I actually haven't had a lot of experience with big brand names. If you buy a big brand name bike, almost certainly you're going to get a good quality bike. So that's the quick answer. But what do I do when someone asks me, is this a good bike? And they send me a link. And I can take a look at the bike. So I look at the color of the bike. That actually matters a lot. Whether you think it does or not. Because if you're happy with the bike, and you like the look of it, you like the feel of it, it fits you right. That's like the most important. You're going to like the bike. Um, and it's probably a good bike for you. But what do I do? I don't look at the color. I don't look at the brand name. I uh, obviously don't look at the fit. Sometimes viewers will... Let's go this way. Sometimes viewers will give me like their height. And I'll tell them, hey, you know, yeah, I guess generally speaking, this will fit you if you have, you know, normal body proportions. But if you have longer legs than most or shorter, that's where inseam comes to uh, mind. What are they doing here? Oh. The road was gone there. It wasn't wet though. Dog ahead. I go over this. Bike vlogger singing to himself. Happy go lucky cyclist. I'm actually late for work. I need to get to work. What do I look for? Specs. I'm looking at the specs. Because generally speaking, like I said, if you get a brand name, the frame is gonna be of good quality. The fork is gonna be of good quality. Generally speaking. I'm looking at the components. There are different component levels from the different manufacturers. Two of the biggest ones being Shimano and SRAM. Shimano is based out of Japan. SRAM is based out of the US. Does that matter? Nah, no, I don't really think so. I think they're sort of the same. Like for like, uh, I wanna go a different way, but I'm sort of going the good old fashioned regular commute route right now. But anyway, so I'm looking at components, and really for commuting, and components have gotten, the quality of them have gotten a lot better. Generally as you go up in, in component group, also known as a group set, the quality increases. What does that mean? It means the price increases. That means they're a little lighter weight. That means they may work a little better up to a point at the very high end uh, 
quality differences are minimal. Extremely minute. Extremely minute. It's more about weight saving. And it's still just a little bit of weight saving. And you actually lose some durability. So, just because you buy an expensive bike doesn't mean it's a good commuter bike. I've talked about this before, what I think a good commuter bike would be. Ooh, we're loud. Um, I'm gonna make a right, yeah. I'm gonna wait for a car. So I don't know, so I talked about this before, about what a uh, good commuter bike would be, I think. Um, yeah. I like disc brakes, brakes that work in all weather conditions. I do not have disc brakes on this bike. What are disc brakes? Disc brakes are basically, you got a metal disc that the pads press up against and they stop you. On a normal bike with rim brakes, the pads here press up against the wheel. So, so it's, you know, the, you know, if you wear out your, you could wear out your wheel basically. With disc brakes, you don't wear out the wheel; you wear out the rotor, which is the disc. But uh, sort of getting off topic here a little bit. So, is this a good bike? Well, like I said, I look at the components, and like I said, a lot of it is dependent on what you want to get out of the bike. And a lot of people are, you know, who are asking that question, are, you know, is this a good commuter bike? And uh, I can almost say for certain, you know, you get what you pay for. And if the bike is priced, or if I know because it's a brand name, the bike is probably priced at $300, $400 or more, it's a good bike. You'll be fine. Is it going to be a bike you want? Is it going to be a bike you like? I don't know. That depends on the person. That's why I mentioned at the beginning of the video, color. You want to be riding a bike you're happy with. You know, uh, so you buy a red bike and it's like, you know, you're just sick of riding a red bike. Now all of a sudden, what do you do? You gotta buy another bike, right? Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, make a left, y'all. Okay. Ah, I just missed my turn. Vote yes. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, I don't know if I should just start posting daily videos because I'm so behind. Voting day here in the U.S. is tomorrow. It'll be November 8th. But it's, uh... By the time I get this posted, it's probably going to be almost Black Friday. So, uh, congratulations to whoever the winners are. And we'll leave it at that. That's right, I gotta go vote tomorrow. Uh, who's bike blogger voting for? Oh, I'm voting for the bike commuter. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think any of them are bike commuters. Oh, well. Oh, well. Big truck. See, we've gone 2.3 miles so far. up ahead they're still doing work on this road I don't really care though because I'm getting off the road and up the hill Control. Woo. 
sort of wanted to go around the business here and see what's going on over there by the sidewalk and the, along the other major road, but gotta get to work screwing around today. It's a question of the day. Is this a good bike? I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not making fun of people who ask the question. There's no dumb question. And if you haven't bike commuted before, how the heck are you supposed to know? That's the bike industry's fault. Yes, it's true. Most people who buy bikes in the United States care. Who buy bikes in the United States are buying them for recreational purposes. Can you buy a mountain bike and use it for recreation but also for commuting? Sure you can. Is it the most optimal for commuting with big uh, knobby tires on a dry road with like no gravel around or anything? Absolutely not. You want a tread that's smooth. That isn't going to be working against you. You don't need all that traction. You really don't. I should have talked about this in another past video. Tire tread doesn't matter on the road. In a perfect world, no. If the road is clean and not full of debris, then no. It doesn't matter. You could have an ultra smooth tread now. If you have very smooth tread like racing tires, you know what happens with racing tires? Well, you're putting a lot of stress on them, you know, accelerating fast and braking quickly. But they wear faster. So, if you're gonna follow the industry jargon, I would look for some touring tires. Tires that sort of like a racing tire, but meant for long races. Because generally speaking, for commuting to work X number of miles per day, they're gonna last you a long time. They'll last you probably, if you have one bike and then one set of tires and you commute every day by bike, they last you probably at least half a year. So, get, get yourself some touring tires. That brings up a point. Tires that come with stock bikes. That's one of the first things you should upgrade when you get a new bike. If you get a bike, you know, a full, complete bike with wheels, and obviously the wheels are gonna have tires on them, at least most likely. You'll get some cheap Kindas or whatever. Nothing wrong with Kenda. Kenda's a great brand, brand uh, tire. But usually you'll get the lower quality stuff. So you'll want to upgrade. Now, if you buy a bike and it's, let's say, a $2,000 bike, yeah, yeah. You should be paying a premium there for a reason. Because they're probably going to give you with stock tires that are some nice, higher quality mid-range Swalbies or something which is a really good brand I do not endorse any particular brand I'm just saying you know from my experience left Ow. but you're still paying a premium if you bought the tires yourself and installed them yourself you're gonna save a lot of money but uh how much money do you need to spend to get yourself a good commuter bike a beginner bike over a hundred dollars that's no ifs ands or buts over a hundred dollars um you could get a used bike you might get a really good deal but there could be something wrong with it which is no big deal but if you don't know how to fix it yourself you're gonna pay for that you're gonna pay for that stuff to be fixed it still might be cheaper that way just a little more hassle that's where you go to you know paying the premium buying the bike at a, like a local bike shop 
and they may give you, you know, a, a nice warranty on it. I don't know how many years, maybe just a year, I don't know. But if they're selling you a good bike to begin with, what they're banking on is they know you're not going to be coming back. What do I mean by that? You're not going to be coming back for tune-ups a whole lot. You know, maybe you have a six-month tune-up, a one-year tune-up, but they know you're not going to have a lot of issues with the bike because it's a good product. And that's why the warranty is good on the frame. It should have been manufactured properly so it doesn't just break on you due to manufacture defect. But... Ah. Let me know if you have any other questions. Leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to get to all of you. I'm a little slow sometimes. But I usually get to all of you. So. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. The cyclist. Let's say hi. What's up? I got the nod. I got the nod. He's probably thinking... Who is that guy? Do I know that guy? It's like when you call somebody, hey buddy, what's going on? Someone, you know. <laughs> I'm not your buddy. What are you talking about? Ah!